Oh, damn it. Alright, so I uh, did it again. I messed up a recording. Two recordings, actually. So that was well over an hour of footage. So I'm combining two episodes into one. This is going to be a quick recap of me exploring the Siren's Landing, and then I'll jump into the instance. Um, yeah, I'm very sorry about this. Also, because I would need to redo a lot of the story on another character in order to get the NPC dialogue, I'm just going to read it out. Uh, sorry again, and <laughs> enjoy the video. This dialogue is with Kerido. Come in, Exemplar. It's me. You doing alright? You know what they say, distance makes the heart grow tastier. I believe that's Fonda makes the heart grow fonder. Mm, no, that's definitely not it. That's exactly... <laughs> Never mind. I found the trail of the eye. It's here. I have two sources who saw it not long ago. This wasn't a competition. You don't have to sound so pleased with yourself. You're just saying that because I found it first. You gonna join me? Soon. I plan to stop in Divinity's Reach and commandeer us some backup. Wait for me. Promise? Making no promises. Over and out. So you can see there he's talking shit about her not knowing how to use the communicator. So this is King Zoran's dialogue. Well, hello. Welcome to Dwenna's Reliquary, where love is the answer to your question. Don't be ridiculous. We all yearn for something, whether we are adventurers like you or a king like me. If not love, for what do you yearn? Right now, I'm yearning to find Balthazar in the Eye of Janthir. Have you seen them? I love that you would ask me that question, but I have not. I have been too busy directing the efforts to clear the air here. Harmony cannot be restored if these great clouds of poison hang in the air. Let me guess, what you're doing is an act of love. Why, yes, you understand. Perhaps you will also assist. I see you have a bit of ley line on your nose. Do turn it toward the poison, don't you? It counters the effects. So yeah, he seems a bit... A bit odd, but, you know, moving on. And so there'd be a radio call from Timey here. You won't believe what just happened, Commander. Yes, no, never mind, can't wait. Graham sent me a letter. Would you like me to read it? Of course you would. He says, Timey, what did the Commander do to Jormag? Destiny's Edge, my guild, had it surrounded, and then, suddenly, an anguished roar, and it returned to the ice. Stop. Do we have to do this now? can't deal with both him and Balthazar. He says that Norn wanted him to kill Jormag. Why or why did he put his arrow in that tooth? I don't have time for his tantrums. He just didn't think. And he didn't get your permission either. <sighs> I could have protected him from this. He'll either change course or we'll have to stop him. But since Jormag's all snoozy, he doesn't have a chance of killing it now, does he? He better not. Talk to him. Maybe you can get him to see reason. It's never too late for him to do the right thing. I don't know if he has a choice anymore. He's under a lot of pressure to live up to Air's legend. And he's so young. Older than you. Only physically. Time me out. Oh, Rock sends a love. Really out. Okay, so an interesting tidbit there is Timey saying how Bram's under a lot of pressure because he is essentially trying to make his entire legend about filling in Air's shoes. So all of the Norn are expecting him to be the leading figure fighting the Elder Dragons and the Norn care more about their legend than their life. So this is insanely important to Bram and if he fails at this, it's almost a fate worse than death. So for cultural reasons, he actually can't back down. Whoa, that's quite a flare. Magic expanding, heating, heartbeat rising. Commander, are you alright? Just triggered something. The place is crawling with embers. I'll get back to you. And here we have a queen who is a bit bonkers of Balthazar. My lord Balthazar has returned. I am overjoyed. It's unsettling. The best news of all. War will be ours and we can coax the gods back. Balthazar was a sight for sore eyes. So you saw him. Here. Oh yes, he came to visit his reliquary, and I was the first to greet him. He was gracious and asked me to maintain the reliquary, but when he left, it went still. These roaming undead hinder the flow of energy. We must feed them to the lava, to his fires. Help me, feed them to the lava? Definitely sounds like the Balthazar I know. <laughs> In the name of almighty Balthazar. What happened? Did you get them? Or did they get you? I got them, of course. I'm gonna take a closer look at this lava spring. It feels... Delicious! But be careful. I'm bored, but not that bored. Interesting how that queen talked about Balthazar being very gracious to her. It's possible that her faith in Balthazar gives her a bit of a skewed look and he may have been a dick, but the reality is Balthazar is unusually pissed off right now and ruthless. So he's been much more of a dick to us, but he's been very benevolent, at least by comparison to his followers in the past. And yes, there's that note from earlier that worship for Balthazar is more about respect for his power, but that doesn't mean he's just a dick all the time. There's a reason people love him. And this is the dialogue of the Queen who favours Lissa. Hmm, what is this that enters the presence of Queen Bahar of Or? Hello, I need to get into Abaddon's reliquary so I can speak to Balthazar. Balthazar is a cross god. Long after the Exodus, his followers were always the ones who caused the most conflict. In my lifetime, we never managed to restore the peace. And as I understand it, 
neither did my descendants. War is unavoidable, I suppose. Which is why we must balance it with as much kindness as possible. Would you be so kind as to help remove the dreadful sickness that has befallen this land? I would. What can I do? Risen have infected Lissa's springs. We must reclaim them. Go. Earn a queen's gratitude. And she points out that after the Exodus, which is when the gods left Tyria and went to the Mists, but not this time with the Elder Dragons, when they took down Abaddon, they withdrew. So there's sort of two stages to that. But when they withdrew the first time, Balthazar's followers were always the most problematic. So it really shows that the gods and their followers haven't always been this like perfect pantheon. Oh wait, well they've never really been this perfect pantheon of they all have a specific niche to fill and it's all balanced in harmony. No, the gods are more like just this group of people that happen to be allied with one another. So while the humans prefer to view them as this unified force. Really, at any time, they can turn on one another, especially because there's been several different sets of this pantheon. We know that Abaddon and Doom have been overthrown, and we know that Balthazar killed his father, so he quite possibly was the god of war before him. Commander, are you there? It's fine if you're busy, I suppose I could do something else. I'm here, Timey. What's the matter? I keep running and rerunning the simulation, trying to confirm our theory. And? I just realized what a huge waste of time it is. Primordus and Jormag have withdrawn. Since Balthazar can't pit them against each other, he'll turn his attention to another dragon. And there's only two dragons left, so it's gotta be one of the two. Good to know. We'll talk more when I'm less busy. Over and out. Okay, so that means Balthazar's target is Krakatoric. Because yes, Primordus and Jormag are asleep, so you think they'd be more vulnerable, but they're also harder to get to. Whereas Krakatoric is still up and running, and Balthazar has a shot at Primordus and Jormag later. And we don't know where the Deep Sea Dragon is. Don't make me hack you open. Come on, open up. And here we have a Silvari researcher and a priest of Abaddon. And you'd be like, wait a minute, Abaddon was overthrown and written out of the history books. How does he have a priest? Well, this guy's new because he points out that he's self-appointed. However, he does refer to his organization, which he's the only member of, as the priesthood of Abaddon. So it shows that despite Abaddon being dead, his power as a god can still garner a lot of respect. And also his soul is out there in the mist still. Perhaps if they manage to contact it, this could be much more of a thing in the future. And here I am again redoing this instance. Oh god, okay. So you can see, yeah, the purple logo over here because I have clicked to redo. In Don't the make me hack you open. Come on, open up. And that's playing again. All the reliquaries are powered. The magic network is unblocked. I should be able to get into Abaddon's now. Okay, I think everything's good. Please, for the love of God, I don't want to record this again. Alright, so yeah, all the reliquaries are, like, have been cleared, which means Abaddon's has opened. And here we are, this is spooky. Hello! How do I initiate contact? Commander, can you hear me? I hear you. I'm at Abaddon's reliquary. It's creepy. We're on our way. Don't start without me. Too late. I'm inside. Ah, yeah, so there's some water, like- Time has taken its toll on this place. Don't touch anything. Yeah, so there's some water in the center here, perhaps representing that Abaddon used to be the god of water. And there's some old parts on the ground, what are these? Uh-oh. Oh, oh god. What, what did I do? You touched something, didn't you? No. Casting the portal now. Where- Signing off. I thought it was over and out. Um, uh, okay. I'm just gonna do that. Not sure which one I'm attacking. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. Shining Blade, if you could uh, get in here soon, that'd be fantastic. You okay. cut me off. I didn't know if you were still in one piece. I said nothing of the sort. Then we arrived when we did. I had it under control. No need to worry. I don't worry. I plot. I plan. And I execute. Don't mess this up, my dear. Again, she's playing herself up as someone very important within the Shining Blade. And she seems so focused on Lazarus. Like, she's like, don't start with that. It's like, you you're... call that fighting? Don't make me laugh. It's like, you're the one with the aspects. Like, I, can't, I physically can't do this thing without you. Like, why are you so antsy about this? Like, does she have some sort of personal tie to it? Fuck me. All right, I'm really going to focus on this. Hang on. Does either one of these things still have a break bar? No, okay. Well, I'm just going to use you to... Oh, and now you have a break bar. Okay. Oh, and you lose all your health as well. Okay, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna hide over here and wait till I can heal. I'm just gonna cut. Oh, I broke combat anyway. Alright. Gimme, 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 gimme. 
Okay, yeah, and so these golems, they are very interesting. So there are these are not designed by Asura. These look to be a callback to the Utopia expansion that was planned for Guild Wars 1 but got cancelled. Because the original Asura like does oh, stop that. Stop that. Because the design for the Asuran architecture was originally inspired by the designs for that expansion. And it was repurposed for Eye of the North. Wait, we talking or Alright, I'll continue that thought later, because we'll see. It's more been of those. warded recently. Fire magic, not Mursad magic. God magic. If the last aspect is here, then Balthazar came this way. Captain, stay here and guard the portal. If anyone else tries to use it, shut it down immediately. You understand? Yes, Exemplar. Let's see if I can get us through this door. And again, how can she tell the difference between god magic and just ordinary fire magic? Like, who are you? How We're do you know these things? Follow me, my dear. Woe to any who get in our way. And she's placing herself again on this equal footing with us. I mean, we've killed two dragons. Like, like why does she think she's so, like, an uh, equal fighter? Fire. And no shortage of it. Any doubt of Balthazar's passage here is rapidly burning away. Pun intended. Uh -huh. Can you shut it down? I can try, but it's god magic. Why don't you see if you can find a way across? Alright, let's see, let's see. But yeah, so those golems, um, in the, in the Utopia DLC, we would be, we would have seen the, the original home of the gods, and they were gonna have all these really high-tech golems there, even more high-tech than what the Asura have. And it seems that at least some of those made their way to Tyria, re right into Abaddon's Reliquary. I don't think we saw these de those designs in Guild Wars 1 either, if I recall. Just quickly, okay. Yeah, although I didn't manage to finish either the Nightfall campaign. Which is where I assume they would have appeared, if anywhere. And yeah, so with Canther on the horizon, Utopia is becoming a much more interesting What do topic. you have on Anise? I'm sure I have no idea what you mean. Hold that thought. Yeah, because Anise, like, they seem to have some sort of interesting relationship. Whoop. <sighs> Can I talk now, or...? And yeah, also, the fact that Anise seems to defer to Kerida so much, just and, like, the fact that Anise is much older than she seems, which Canucks us out. Like, does that mean Kerida... I meant... I've never seen a niece defer to anyone the way she does you. I'm assuming it's blackmail. No, nothing so sordid. We're old friends, that's all. Sorry to disappoint. Alright. Yeah, so, old friends? Hang on. Kanak in Season 2 was like, I, you've taught me not much about illusions, Anise. For example, I wonder if you're not, not quite as young as you- and she shut him up immediately. She was like, don't you dare finish that sentence. And maybe they, they, again, this is a callback of, oh, don't talk about a woman's age, but then it's also, Anise can hide that sort of thing. If she was an old lady, she could make herself look like a young woman. And the fact that she reacted so strongly, it seems that is the case. Which means, if Kerida and Anise are old friends, could Kerida be doing something similar? I mean, she hasn't done, used many- So, you and Anise grew up together, met as recruits, what? If you must know, I've been with the Blade longer than Anise. She respects that, I suppose. There's nothing more to it. So, someone... Okay, she's been with the Blade longer than Anise. And Anise is now the leader, who is much older than she appears. I mean, who knows? Maybe she's so powerful that she's even prolonged her life. So, if that's the case, how how old are you, Kerida? Because you have been in this business longer? Like, what? And, and I was talking about, she does, Kerida doesn't seem to use Mesmer Illusions. That portal uh, from earlier was created by one of her um, Shining Blade. I think one of the um, achievements was don't get burned by these things. Yeah, that was created by one of her soldiers from up from earlier. Like, you can see it's still over there. So, if she has a way of somehow preserving her life like a niece, then how does she do it? Could it have any relation to that heart-tasting comment Looks she like you did it. You still have your eyebrows? Uh, they needed a trim anyway. Keep moving. I'm more worried about my entire coat of fur. And also, yeah, so Utopia is much more relevant with Canther on the horizon because humans are rumored to have first come to Tyria on Canther. 
and if they came, and, the, and if the gods brought them there, maybe they came from the home of the gods. So maybe... Secrets nested in secrets. That is so like Abaddon. I can handle Balthazar's ward, but that's not all that's keeping this door locked. Look around. And so yeah, she talks about Abaddon almost as if she knows him. I mean, surely not. Or maybe she's dealt with things that relate to Abaddon quite significantly. I mean, the Mossad had a significant relation to Abaddon. They were terrified of his power. And she knows a lot about the Mossad. Giant orbs here. No idea what they do. Hmm. This looks ancient. Like some kind of mechanism. The workings connect it to these side rooms. Maybe the key to opening that door is in these side rooms. I'll check them out. I'll work on the ward and make sure these dormant guardians don't cause any trouble. Kill two birds with one stone. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright, well you do that. Let's go in here and have a look. This looks like the rubble at the entrance, uh... only... Bigger! And it's definitely got the creepy hey, eye design the like door. Abaddon normally does. Oh. And it shuts. Did you say something? I can't hear you through that door. Are you taking the piss? Ah, God spittle. More guardians. Hey, I don't, don't hear anything. Don't worry about me. I can handle this. You get some rest. I hate stone. It doesn't bleed. That 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 is an issue when fighting uh, stone enemies. Yeah. I mean, how my axe is even doing anything? <laughs> Makes no sense whatsoever. Um, all right. I guess the command is just that strong. Doing better against this thing. It's like, like it's, I mean, the second time. What, 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 what can I be talking about? Uh, yeah, because I've um, so similar to the final episode. Oh, hang on, I'll hold that thought. Whatever you did, it had an effect. All right. Mm -hmm. Good sign. Let's see what's in this other room. All right, I'm just gonna wait for my. I'll moment. stay here. This ward is sticky. Besides, last thing you need is a horde of guardians at your back. Okay, these actually came to life, right? You weren't just hacking up dormant guardians for my benefit. Uh, I'm offended, but I guess you'll never know for sure, will you? Good hunting. Okay, yeah, so fuck you. You're clearly just waiting here so you don't have to put your own life at risk until you fight Lazarus. Um, but again, though, that's like she's been happy to go into the fray before, so it seems Lazarus is very important to her. And what was I saying before all that? Um, oh, yeah. So you'll notice, like with the, um, like just in, as a general rule, like with the Flashpoint fight, I will probably do a lot better than you would think against these bosses. I did struggle the first time, I did die a few times, but because I just did them, because I screwed up the recording. Uh, I'm gonna do reasonably well, I reckon. On the upside, though, it means the, the actual episode that I'm going to this won't be too long. Probably. Alright, hang on, hang on. Whoop. Oh fuck, oh fuck. Oop! Come here. Not sure where you're going there. Come over here, please. What the little ones are for resin. Alright, I just need that to go away and bam. And heal. Alright, there we go. That's excellent. That's excellent. Woo! Freaking breeze! An orb lit up! Right. That's both orbs lit, and the ward is down. Trying the door. Was there even a ward there the And you thought time? all your hard work was for naught. I never thought that. No, never mind. I guess that was me. The voice actress for Karen The is Eye really of Janthir! Good. There! Move! Ah. Okay, so I seem to remember this mechanic well now. Alright, I need to break this thing's bar when they're on top of it. It doesn't like us being here. Hmm. Maybe I can slow it down without killing it. And just don't kill bang. it, whatever you do. That's what I just said. Do you ever listen to me? I'm sorry, did you say something? So it seems the Eye of Janther is somehow important for us taking on Lazarus, because you wouldn't think it would be, it would be because like we found it now. I mean, it's like, 
I mean, I suppose if the aspect isn't on the other side of the store, we could need the eye there later. But does she have something else in mind for it? Alright, one down. Uh huh, bang. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, interesting that she says don't kill it. Almost the idea that the Eye of Janth is alive. I suppose it just means like don't destroy it. I mean, I say don't kill it for like not alive things all the time in games. Um, alright, alright, so that thing is being annoying. I'm just gonna back up for a second. Please stop making the ground evil. It's giving up on us. Moving on. Excellent. It didn't kill us. It must have seen the true sight dormant in us. What? Now it will lead us to the last aspect. We are chosen, you and I. In its presence, we'll be able to see Lazarus when he reforms. Wait, otherwise Lazarus would be invisible? That's what you take away from that? Yes, it's a Mersat thing like floating and immortality. Used to be impressive. We can't lose the eye. Where is it? Patience. It'll be nearby. Look. There's the last aspect. But no Balthazar. Damn. I was hoping. No. No Balthazar. Are you alright? Yes. It's just that... I've been waiting for this for a very long time. So, what's the plan? Let's spread the aspects out, so we can watch them. Would you mind? Do we have to do some kind of spell? Not according to legend. The fact that the aspects are all in proximity should trigger them to merge. Any time now. What? Relax. I brought the true Shining Blade with me. It'll weaken his defenses so we can kill him. Oh, that eases my mind. You brought a big knife to a Mersat fight. It's a relic. Centuries of history and magic in this old thing. A heap of blood-curdling white mantle screams in it. Ever tried using your fancy sword on the aspects? Indestructible or not. Maybe it will at least damage one. I've been waiting for the perfect moment, my dear. The time has come. You ready to fulfill a prophecy? As ready as I'll ever be. Wait, what? Never mind, just be ready. This isn't going to be a walk in the park. What exactly are you saying? I'm saying that you and I are the only two who can end this tragic saga. Lazarus won't go down easily. Okay, so before we get started, there is a lot to unpack there. So, to start with, Kerida, she says we are chosen. I said it wrong in a video the other day, so being chosen doesn't mean you're like magically potent, it means you're connected to the Flame Seeker prophecies. And so the Eye of Janthir identified people like this and ensured the White Mantle could hand them over to the Mossad and they'd be sacrificed on the Bloodstone to power the door of Kamali and keep Abaddon imprisoned. But ultimately it was an effort from the Mossad to stop Abaddon's realm from opening because they were afraid that his minions, the Titans, could kill them. So you might be wondering, wait, what the hell does that have to do with the current Guild Wars 2 story. Well, the Flame Seeker prophecies were created by Glint, and Glint has had a major impact on the Guild Wars 2 story. I mean, she's been the one forging this entire plan to end the Elder Dragon cycle or whatever. That's what we were finding in Taria with the Forgotten and the Exalted. She definitely seems to have a major influence, and she even tried to kill Krakatoric with Destiny's Edge. So, us being the commander, the Dragon Slayer, I suppose, yeah, it makes sense that we would fit into the Flame Seeker prophecies. And now, how does that feed into this fight? Well, being chosen means we have dormant true sight. Normally you would have to awaken this gift through the process of ascension, which is by becoming close to the gods. And in Guild Wars 1 that was something our character undertook, because we were also chosen in Guild Wars 1. And once we were able to do this, using true sight, we could see the Mossad, because normally they're invisible because of their mist walking abilities. So that will help us immensely for this fight, because when we are near the Eye of Janthia, it awakens that gift. Now, as for hurting Lazarus himself, the plan is, primarily, this weapon here, the Shining Blade, which became like the mascot of the Shining Blade, 
is made by the Seers, and so the Seers have magical power that can hurt the Mursat, which we used in Guild Wars 1 by enchanting our weapons and armor. So you can only imagine how good a weapon that was designed from the start with that magic, not just enchanted with it later. You can only imagine how powerful a weapon like that could be. So Lydia is going to stab one of the aspects, and when Lazarus reforms, it'll like be inside him already. So we'll get a direct hit without actually having to attack him. That should hit him down pretty badly. And then another thing, how does Kerida know so much about the Flameseeker prophecies? Like, this is big Guild Wars 1 lore. It's almost like she was there. Anyway, let's uh, assemble these aspects and figure out what the hell's going on.